if you would, the reason I forgot to come out is because the Holy Spirit was given a different message than he intended for you to hear today. Isn't that weird? I didn't plan it. Can you guys hear me? Am I on? Yeah, sort of, kind of. Okay. Um, just take the notes and uh, just don't even worry about the PowerPoint. Shut it all off. Shut it off. This doesn't happen very often. You're probably going to say, Pastor, in 10 years, I don't remember the last time this happened. But we're going to do something different this morning. We're going we're gonna to set aside the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to come back to that in two weeks. Man, I was all prepared for that. I studied real hard this past week for that. And I was sitting in there and I was listening to the music and I was reflecting. But we're all excited about next week, right? Going to be in a new house. Yeah. Going to be in a new house. But for me, it's bittersweet. And it hit me this week. Actually, it really hit me last night. And I, can, I got to thank Miss Colleen for that. She's sitting right there. She, had, uh, she said something to me on, uh, what was it, Friday or Thursday? We were working on the chairs. And she sent me something last night that would cause me to reflect and go back in time to the very first day we met in our home as Fellowship of the Hills in October of 2008. Well, this isn't a day to talk about all of those things, but it is a day... It is a day that really hit me. This is the last time we're going to be in this place. A lot of smiles, right? New place, a high ceiling. Whoa, it's awesome, man. I can't touch it anymore, you know? You know? Bigger room, bigger stage, cooler electronics. I mean, man, the Lord has really brought us in some... We're even going to have a sprinkler system. So if the power of the Holy Spirit catches on fire in a church, the devil's going to try to put it out. So we're going to have a sprinkler system. But my goodness, I, I began to really think last night. And as all the music was being sung this morning, as I was looking over the notes for Matthew chapter 5, as we were going to finish up the last chapter. I said, Lord, I'm ready for this. Let's do this. I've planned on this. And he said, no. you got to finish this first. Because what happens is, is we get so excited about something that's coming that we forget where we came from and what God's doing. So as I was in there, I was kind of reminiscing with the disciples. It's what they must have been thinking along the journey that they had with Jesus. And then they put Jesus on a cross. Y'all remember that, right? And they thought, it's over. And some of what I was reflecting on was, wow, Lord, I've seen you do so much here for 10 years. 15 years in the life of this church, but 10 years in this building. So many memories in 10 years, right? Baby dedications we've had up here and salvations and folks that have, lives have been changed, marriages that have been restored right here in this building. And soon we'll leave. This is it, the last service here. I wonder what the disciples must have thought when Jesus was hanging on the cross, oh my goodness, all the miracles, all the things that happened with Jesus, and now he's gone. Three days later, he walked out of the tomb. Wow, in seven days, we're going to walk into a new building. You see, their ministry had just begun when Jesus walked out of the tomb. They had been prepared for what Jesus was going to do. Remember, Jesus says, I'm the Messiah. It's because of me. Sin, the debt will be paid. They didn't quite understand it. They figured it was all over. And Jesus walked out of the tomb, and then he gathered with them before he ascended to heaven. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1. Now I want you to go with me because the Lord just, he just did this in this room. So I have no idea where he's going. But I do know this. 
I know where we're going. I know where we've came from. I know where we are today in this place. But I don't know what the journey ahead has for us. But I do know this. As long as I walk with Him, as long as I listen to Him, as long as I trust Him, as long as I lean on Him, the journey is going to be so sweet. Amen, Amen church? Amen. So, so here are... I guess I should get to Acts, right? I'm still in Matthew. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And what's next, church? Acts. Acts. There you go. Holy Spirit, I need your help right now. This is what you want. Father, I come to you. As we close out this last service in this building, Lord, as you've caused me to reflect on just this past 10 years in this place, you just flooded my mind and my heart. And Lord, you've set aside another message because I truly believe this is where you want to go this morning. Lord, let us, let us see the excitement of what you've done. Let us not rest on that. Let us see the excitement of what you are doing. And let us not rest on that. Let us see the excitement of what you're going to do. Let us remain faithful. Let us remain committed. And let us serve in the power of the Holy Spirit within us. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, so Jesus has returned. And he is with his disciples. And we're going to see the explosion of the church. Can I just pause with you for a moment? Isn't it great to see what the Lord's done in this place? And those that are tuned in with us at the cinema, and those who are tuned in with us online, right? Isn't that really cool to see all those things? How many of you would like to see this explode? Listen, listen, listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, listen. I'm not talking about explode because we want to have an ego and we want to see, you know, just we want to see all kinds of folks just come and sit. You know, there's a difference in worship. There are worshipers that, what? They come and sit, soak, and sour. You ever heard of those worshipers? They come, sit, soak, and sour. I don't believe that's what God wants us to do. I don't believe that's what Jesus was telling his disciples as he was soon to ascend to heaven. And then he was telling them, listen, go and do the work. You've been prepared. There's so much more. It's not just about this house. The house is so greater. Grow the kingdom of God. So what do we do? We pray. We praise and we participate. Amen? We pray and we praise and we participate. We can't do anything without the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. Amen, church? So we need to be a house of prayer. That's what he said. Jesus says, my house will be a house of prayer. Oh my goodness, we, we've seen the Lord do so many things in 15 years. We've seen the Lord do so many things in this house. I remember all the gatherings we've had back in that corner in prayer. In the gatherings we've had upstairs in prayer. What are we praying for? Praying for the power of the Holy Spirit to be in the midst of this house and His people so we might be a light. Remember we talked about that in the partial part of the message that the Lord gave us in the Sermon on the Mount, that we would be a light last week and that we would be the salt. In the last 10 years we've seen growth in this house. I want to see the church explode. I want to see Fellowship of the Hills to, con- to, to, to not rest on where we are and what we've been. I want to see the people of God ignited with a fire that will be in prayer and say, Lord, use me. Lord, may I lift my voice in praise. May it not be about my ego, not be about who I am, but all of who you are. And Lord, let me participate in your ministry. Wherever it is, and oh my goodness, I I was listening, and I think Nick was sharing. Thank you, Nick, and thanking all of you. I I was telling Scotty as we were privately in that room back there, I said, man, I had to take a break this past week. We were so overwhelmed with so many volunteers. I had to regroup myself. What a blessing it is to see the people of God with a desire to serve Him. 
you want to see a community change, then we don't rest in what's happened here. We take what's happened here through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, and we watch it explode for the glory of God. So as Jesus was speaking with his disciples, pick up with me in Acts chapter 1. And again, please keep in mind, the Holy Spirit's giving this as, as I'm giving it to you. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. So when they had come together, they were asking him, the disciples had come together, and it's kind of like, okay, Jesus, what do we do now? Hey, listen, this has been a cool place, Pastor. We've had a lot of fun here. We've seen a lot of things happen, but what do we do now? Write this down. Keep doing. Keep doing. Jesus, he goes on, notice this. It says, they came together and they said, they were asking the Lord and said, Lord, at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? The question is, are you restoring that? And he said to them in verse number seven, it is not for you to know the times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority. Can I say to you that, that it's not for us to know what the Lord's going to do and when he's going to come back? What we are to be doing is keep doing, keep marching forward, right? Take what we've learned, take the excitement that we've seen over the last 10 years in this building, over the 15 years if you've been a part of Fellowship of the Hills, and move forward. Don't rest in it. Verse number 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in both Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and even to the uttermost parts of the earth. You know what happens sometimes in churches? Remember I said if we're not careful, we'll sit and we'll soak and we'll sour. Oh Lord, may that never be for Fellowship of the Hills. May we never be a body of believers that comes just to sit and just to soak it up. Anybody have a sponge at the house? Y'all have sponges, right? A sponge is useless if it's all soaked up, right? What do you got to do? You got to squish, you got to wring it out. Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? What did Jesus say? He says, listen, man, you, you've gotten all this. Listen, it's not for you to know what's going to happen. Let me do my thing, but you go out and share my thing with everybody. He says, I want you to go out and be witnesses in Jerusalem in Judea, and Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Hey, listen, you know the Lord has given us the city of Blairsville in Union County. This is our Judea. This is our Samaria. This is our Jerusalem. Amen, church? Amen. We, we, we leave this building, and we thank the Lord for all that He's done here, and we enter that new building. For, you, know, it's, you know what I found out? It, it, it's just like this building. It's a little bit bigger got some cool stuff in it, but it's got drywall. You know how I know it's got drywall? Because they found the air conditioning leak yesterday. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, right, Jim? Jim I, Jim, I told them that if they didn't know how to do it, we had somebody in the church that could do it. I did it in a nice way. Yeah. <laughs> and, they, and it wasn't yesterday, it was Friday. He came to me Friday, and he was all sweaty. He says, Pastor, we, we found that leak. Is Connie in here? She's over at the cinema. You right there? And Connie, she's, you got to know Connie. She's always got a smile on, always happy, always sees the good things. He says, Pastor, that's why she works with me. Amen. And then the guy, he says, while he's in that room, and he says, We found the leak. That's the good news. Anytime somebody says that, there's a but to follow. He says, But we got to get to it. And I said, what's that mean? He says, we got to cut a piece of drywall out of the bathroom so we can get to the leak. And I think, oh, that's terrible, that's terrible. And Connie goes, no, that's good news, they found the leak. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's just a building. It's just a building like this, it's got drywall. Every now and then it's going to have leaks. Oh, my goodness. For those that have been here for a while, you all know when it rains real bad, it leaks over here. And we got a crew that comes here and they get out the vacuum cleaners and they soak all the water up. How many of you guys are going to be excited? We're not going to have to do that anymore. Amen. But you know what? Hey, there was fellowship soaking up the water. Amen? Yeah. Boy, a lot of things to reflect on. 
Sometimes we only think of the good things, but even in some of the bad things, the Lord's presence is there, and He shows us some really cool stuff. Amen? Yeah. Jesus says, you're going to be my witnesses. And forth were His witnesses. It's not about a building. It's about what we're building. Amen? It's about building the kingdom of God. He says, go be my witnesses. And after that, in verse number 9, and after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on him, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Can you imagine? <laughs> Jesus, all right, this is what you're to do. <laughs> He's gone as they're watching. It's like, really? I mean, that's it? Is there more? Go over to verse number 13. When they entered the city, they went up to the upper room where they were, where they were staying. That is, there was Peter and John and James and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the, the son of Simon and Judas, the son of Jamin, James. Uh, these all with one mind were continually devo devoting themselves to prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So, so they all left. Jesus is gone. He's ascended. They all left, and they, they go to this room, and they're, and they're all there. And what were they doing? Pray. What were they doing, church? Pray. Come on, what were they doing? Pray. Praying. And they were all in one accord. Amen? Oh, my. For 10 years, we've been in this house. We've been praying, Lord. <laughs> I thought about it last night. Lord, when are you going to give us a building? When are you going to give us a place to call home? You know what he reminded me of? It wasn't about the building. When you were the people of God, you are home. Amen? We're blessed to get a new building. But old church, let's never forget we're the family of God. We should always be praying. We should always be in one mind and one spirit with the Lord. Go to John chapter, or excuse me, Acts chapter 2. Pick up with me in verse number 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they... We're all where? All together. Where were they? In one place. Isn't it neat when we come together in one place? Man, I got to thinking about that. I don't know about you, but I love it when we can come together in one place. Isn't that awesome? And it doesn't matter where the place is. Man, we've been meeting here for 10 years. It's been great to come here. Soon we're going to go to another place. But we're the same family. The same family. No matter where we're at, we can come together. So they came together in this one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Wow, I remember 10 years ago. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, you know, next week's message is about reflection, celebration, and dedication. It's amazing how the Lord's going to take what we're talking about today and segue into that next week. I, I, be I began to think about that. I began to think about 10 years ago. It was in July that the Lord gave us this place 10 years ago. Isn't it amazing the Lord's going to give us a new place in July, 10 years later? Wow. I remember the first time we came here, we didn't have a full praise band. It was like the karaoke style of worship. <laughs> yeah. Y'all remember? Who's here that remembers that? Yeah, the karaoke style of worship. We would put it on the screen, and we had this praise and worship music, and we would sing with them. Boy, we've come a long way in our praise teams, haven't we? Yeah. 
I, I, we, we never had this many seats out, by the way, when we started the first service in this house 10 years ago. Yeah. But you know what happened? As happened in the other four moves, this was move number five, and we're getting ready to face move number six. The power and the presence of the Holy Spirit came over us. There's something that happens when we allow the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to work within the body of Christ when we come together. How do I know that? Well, let's go on. So the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit came upon them. In verse number 3, And they appeared to them... And there appeared to them tongues as of fire disturbing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Before I come out, Nick was praying with me, I praise with the praise team. When I come out, I want to speak with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit through me. I want the Lord to use my tongue for his service. Amen? There are sometimes I say things, and it's like, where did that come from? Yeah. It's kind of funny. Yesterday, Susan and I were, we went out and had a pizza. It was a great pizza, by the way. And we had some leftovers. Man, just so much going on this week. And I looked at Susan as she was standing in the kitchen, and I said, honey, did you get the pizza out of the oven? And she gave me one of them weird looks. She said, what do you mean get the pizza out of the oven? I said, oh, no, get the pizza out of the car. Has anybody ever done that? It's like, what? Where did that come from? You know, that sometimes happens here. It's like something will come out. It's like, wow, Lord, that was really cool. I could have never thought of that. You did that. At the right moment, at the right time, for the Holy Spirit to speak to someone's heart. Someone from time to time, will come to me after a service and say, Pastor, I was under conviction today. How would you know that? I said, because I looked at your Facebook page. (laughs) No, that's not true. That's not true. How would I know that, man? And you know what? I selected you for that message on Sunday morning. You know how that happened? The Holy Spirit knew that morning what you needed to hear when he brought his family together. Has anybody ever come to this house and felt convicted? Anybody ever come to this house and felt convicted and said, I ain't going back? <laughs> Go to verse number 14, Acts chapter 2. But Peter, taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea, and all you who live in Jerusalem, Let this be known to you, and give heed to my words, for these men are not drunk. They're not drunk as you suppose, for it is the, what? It's only the third hour of the day. I got to thinking about that verse. Wouldn't it be so awesome if the people of God were so on fire that the community would go, them people are drunk, man. They are, they are so whacked out. I don't know what's going on with them. And then, then, then your pastor comes and says, oh man, it's only the third hour. These people are just excited for Jesus. Can you imagine if the church, I'm not talking about Fellowship of the Hills, I'm talking about the church, the body of Christ. Can you imagine what would happen in this community, in this state, in this country, in this world, if the people of God got excited about the Jesus that saved them? Wow. Yeah. Is it just me, or is somebody else reflecting on what the Lord's done in your life? Yeah. For these men are not drunk, as you might think, for it's only the third hour of the day. Slide over to verse number 22. As Peter continues, verse 1 says, Men of Israel, listen to these words. Now remember what Jesus told them? He said, you're going to be my witnesses. Now think about this just for a moment. We are in Blairsville, Georgia. 
Are you with me? Did, did anybody come to Blairsville, Georgia because it was called Blairsville, Georgia? Where are you? I need to meet you. I didn't even know where Blairsville, Georgia. My, my brother was building a house here. I had no idea. We were looking at a church in Powell, Tennessee. I thought I had arrived. Somebody said, Marty, you got an ego. If I'd had an ego, I'd have taken that church because it was a nice sized church. I thought I had arrived. If I had an ego, I would have never tried to buy a house that I couldn't afford to buy and start a church in my living room that Susan and I were going to have to invest in. Only Jesus can do that. In fact, there were many times I looked in the mirror and, I, and just like this, I was like, really? This is it? Man, this is what you want me to do? So Jesus says, you guys are going to be my witnesses. Now think about that just for a moment. We're in Blairsville, Georgia. Why? We are fellowship of the hills. Why? Come on, help me out here. Because umpteen years ago, these guys did what Jesus told them to do. Way over there, in Judea, in Jerusalem and Samaria, the church began to explode. And we're in Blairsville, Georgia, because those men did what Jesus told them to do. We've been in this building for 10 years, doing what Jesus has told us to do. Can I share with you, it ain't over? Jesus, don't worry about when I'm coming back. You just keep doing what I called you to do. Notice, notice this with, with such authority. Peter, in, in verse number 22, he says, Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him in your midst, just as you yourselves know. This man delivered over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men, and you put him to death. But God raised him up again, putting an end to the agony of death, since it was impossible for him to be held in the power. First David says of him, I saw the Lord always in my presence, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue exalted. Moreover, my flesh also will live in hope because you will not abandon my soul to Hades nor allow your Holy One to undergo decay. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make the full of gladness with your presence. And Peter continues in verse number 29, Brethren, I may confidently say to you regarding the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us today. Wow, a great man of God. David, he died and he's still buried, amen? <laughs> but what was the contrast that Peter was giving? You put Jesus on a cross. It was God's plan that he would come and he would save you. And guess what? Death could not hold him. He arose. And so because, and so because he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn to him with an oath to seat one of his descendants on his throne, he looked ahead and he spoke of the resurrection of Christ so that he was neither abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh suffer decay. This Jesus God raised up again, to which we are all witnesses. Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth, he has poured forth this which you both see and hear. For it was not David who ascended to heaven, but it was Jesus himself. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at the right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know, let them know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, 
this Jesus whom you super, this Jesus whom you crucified. What was what was what was he saying? He was saying, "Hey, listen, I want to draw this comparison." David is in the tomb, but yet David knew that God would send, prophesied that God would send his son Jesus Christ to come. It was already predetermined. You were going to put him on a cross. God was going to raise him from the dead. And today he sits at the right hand, and I'm preaching this to you. And then we get to his message. I love how he starts this off. We get to his message in verse number 37. It's the message that we came with 15 years ago in this place called Blairsville, our Judea, our Samaria, our Jerusalem that the Lord sent us to. It's this place over the last 10 years we've been proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's this place that we've been praying and praising and participating. It's this place that is only the beginning. Until either Jesus calls us home, or one day, wouldn't that be awesome? You know what? I'm, I'm just, I'm going off script here. Lord, I, I don't know where you want to go with this. But I'm just thinking, wouldn't it be great to be in the new house next week and to see that place filled and all of a sudden Jesus said, hey, now it's time. <laughs> you, get, you think these digs are nice? Wait till you see what I got for you. Amen. Amen? Amen? So then he brings the message. I love this message. Verse number 37. Now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, You need to repent. You need to repent, and each one of you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children. And for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. Wow. Hey, listen, listen, listen. This is awesome. This is great. But he's got more to do. Because we are his witnesses. As we learned last week, we are his salt that adds flavor. We are His light that goes into the darkness and brings the truth out. We've only just begun. Fellowship of the Hills, we have only just begun. We've only just begun to, to pray and to praise and to participate in the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we go next week... And we have that first service, and the Lord says, well, not today. I'm not calling you home today because you got more work to do. Amen? And we're going to go out to our Judea and our Jerusalem and our Samaria. We're going to continue to present the gospel here in Blairsville and Union County. Not so we can put people in a seat to make us feel good. Look what we've done but to put people in a seat who have received Jesus Christ so they can get out of that seat and they can go forth and do great things. Amen? What did Peter say? You need to repent. You need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And this is a promise not only to you, not only to your children, but as far off to all who are called to the Lord. And with many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Hey, isn't that what we need to be doing? Shouldn't every one of us be bringing that salt and that life? Part of the message today is, is we were going to dissect a portion of the law. Jesus would start off with each one of those, and he would say, you have heard it said... And then he would follow it up by saying, but I say to you. And in the last part of that message, and I don't want to give it away because in two weeks I'm going to preach that message. It says in verse number 48, he says, and you will know the what? The, the real true love of God. Scotty and I were just talking about that. And, and there for a moment I, I began to think to myself, what does it mean to truly know the love of God? And I started looking out of here. If we truly know the love of God... 
then there's not one of us that would want to see even our enemies go to a place called hell. Our love would be the love of Christ that while they were nailing him on the tree and they pierced his side, the words that he would say was, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Can you imagine having that kind of love for your enemy? Look at the person next to you. Can you imagine having that kind of love for that dude you're sitting next to? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Fellowship of the Hills, we, we've only just begun. Peter continued in his exhortation in, in delivering the message. In verse number 41, so then... Those who had received his word were baptized. And that day, look at this, look at this. Oh man, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine standing in the pulpit on my first sermon and preaching a message like that says, Hey, you all nailed Jesus to the tree. You need to get saved from this perverse generation. You all need to get saved and you all need to get baptized. I wonder how many just get up and walk out. On that day, Peter spoke with such boldness, with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that was over him. Look at this. So when those who had received his word were baptized, verse 41, that day there were added about 3,000 souls. <laughs> the church exploded. And it's been exploding ever since. 3,000 souls were added to the kingdom of God. What happens in churches across America and churches across the world is we become comfortable. We feel as if we have arrived. I remember when we were at the metal building down the street, I said, Lord, please don't let this be the last place you send us. It's so hot here. Kind of funny, I'll, I'll mention a little bit this next week. We had, if y'all remember who were there, we had one bathroom. I was joking with somebody this week, I think I was sharing it with Connie. I said, We had one bathroom, and we rented two porta potties for the men outside that building. When you came to Fellowship of the Hills, it was a desire to be there, amen? <laughs> Especially if you were a man, you, you would try to sneak in the ladies' restroom, they'd boot you out. They would go, Yours is outside. But you know what? When you have a desire to serve the Lord, you don't care what the building looks like. You don't care whether you have to go to a porta potty outside. It's not about being in a place that's got all the bells and the whistles and the electronics. I was in a church not too long ago. Our son attends this church. It's a huge church. It's a mega church down in Coral Springs. Their stage is bigger than our church. <laughs> And, and, and Pastor Dave was bringing a message. Now, he, he, an incredible pastor. Incredible man of God. Some of the things that they do, a little bit different, but he came out of the center of the stage up. <laughs> I thought, that's cool, man. <laughs> so, so the guys have been joking this week, now that we got a high ceiling, they're putting me in a zip line. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. It's not about entertainment. It's not about theatrics. It's about the Word. There wasn't nothing big that happened that day. They, they didn't have smoke and fog and stuff coming out of the stage. Right? They didn't have all that stuff. They didn't have a 20-piece praise team that went out before them. Peter stood up with the word 
And he gave them the truth. And the truth pierced their hearts. And it says on that first message he preached, over 3,000 came to know Jesus. Fellowship of the Hills. In a few minutes, I'm going to pray. That will be the last message in this house. But it's just a building. You see, the message continues. The work continues. He's just taken us to a new place where we can continue to grow the kingdom of God. This local church we call Fellowship of the Hills, but not for our glory, not for my ego, not for any self-centered pride, but to see the kingdom of God grow. May that always be our prayer. May when we leave this house, that we leave this house with a desire to come back together, to hear the word of God, that we might go out and be the salt and the light in this world, in our Jerusalem. Will you pray with me? (laughs) Father, you're well aware this was not the message that I thought you had for today. It was all planned out in a neat little package, what I thought you had for us this day. But Lord, the power of your Holy Spirit has taken us in a different direction, and I pray, Lord, that I've done it justice the way you wanted it, the way you wanted it brought this morning. If for nothing else, Lord, you've spoken to my heart today. May we never forget where we came from. May we never forget the call that you've placed on our life. May we never become so comfortable that we think we have arrived. It's not for me to know when you call us home. It's not for me to know when the last breath on this earth that I'll take. I have no idea. But Lord, you gave a commission upon my life as one of your followers. And each person in this room that claims Jesus Christ as their Savior, you've given us the great commission to go out. To go out. Not to just sit and soak and... But Lord, to go out, to be a participant in the gospel of Jesus Christ. In all the areas that you've called us to. I think of Scotty here, Lord in the pastor-to-pastor program, as he travels to various parts of our world, encouraging and teaching young pastors as, as you've sent them out, Lord, in the communities and the villages in which they're at. Many of these young pastors, Lord, they would be very thankful just to have this place that we're in now, this place that we're leaving, this place that we say, oh my goodness, no more leaks that we're going to have to deal with. Oh, they would be so thankful to be here. Lord, let us be thankful for where we've come from. Let us be thankful for what we've had. And let us rejoice in where you're taking us. But not to a building, but to a greater work. Let us be excited about what it is you have in store for us. Because we don't know what tomorrow brings. So let us take each moment that we have, each place that you take us, each person that we meet, that, Lord, we would be that light and that salt of Christ. May we understand the power and the presence and the filling of the Holy Spirit within our lives to be used by you. Oh, Lord, please don't let us get comfortable. Let us always be excited to share the word to live the word until you call us home. Let us be about your business. Let us be the witnesses to the uttermost parts of the world. This place, Blairsville, this place, Union County. Lord, my prayer that Fellowship of the Hills will be known as a local church that has a a passion, a compassion, a desire, an eagerness to share and show the love of Jesus Christ to all they meet. May they see something different about us. 
May they not see theatrics. May they not see pride. May they not see ego. But may they see a family that loves each other and wants to love them to the kingdom of God with a love that far exceeds anything that my finite mind could ever comprehend. That real, true love of Jesus Christ. A love that was so great that you gave your life for me. Oh, what love. A love that you would tell us is a great command that I leave with you. Jesus says to love as I've loved. To love as I've loved. Oh Lord, I, I, I want the love of Jesus to flow through me. I want to see you do a greater work than we could ever imagine here in this county, in this city. And Lord, to even have the opportunity, like Scotty, to be able to send other missionaries across the world to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Lord, right now, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the 10 years in this house. Thank you for the 10 years I've been blessed to stand in this house behind this pulpit on this stage that belongs to you. So many memories. But Father, the work has only just begun. It's not finished.